Hey, good evening, everybody. It is Steve with Real Progressives. The cult is alive and well, baby. The cult is alive and well. And it's interesting. One of the people, and I won't mention her name, <clears throat> the very, very popular candidate was afraid to be associated with MMT. That candidate was afraid to be associated with it because some of the other slower kids that follow and lead others around called MMT a cult. This individual running for office did not want to be associated with being a part of an MMT cult. So this person has really, really great platform, has a phenomenal platform, but this person is afraid to own the economics of her own platform because the cool kids that don't know any better dub this a cult. I, I watched countless people that have come through the doors of Real Progressives, who were once volunteers that didn't understand MMT, that ran off and called it a cult. Do you know that there is nothing more shameful, literally nothing more shameful on the planet than someone that doesn't understand something and rather than admit that they don't understand, uses a term like it's a cult. This is a smear tactic that lower intellect people use. People that are lesser people use lesser convictions, lesser value, quite frankly, to call something so important a cult. You've got to realize the way the herd works. When one person in the herd says something, five other little minions say the same thing. And then they repeat it until their other minions say the same thing. <clears throat> so I started, you know, a friend earlier said, hey man, MMT, a cult that's not crazy, something we can believe in. Let's go ahead and own that baby. Let's take it back. And there he is, Zachary. Way to go, brother. So Zachary was the one who came out there and said this. And or I, I just sat there and I thought to myself, I was like, we really need to understand that no matter what your flavor of life is, no matter what group or pack you hang with, no matter whether you're in this little shitty little group of people that think they're the coolest kids in the world, they run around, drink their skinny lattes at some sort of a high-end, you know, coffee house with their with their special friends. <clears throat> You still have to learn how to pay for your goddamn programs. And you have to know how to do it because when you vote for people that say they're going to reduce spending or be fiscally responsible or that they're going to raise taxes to pay for something, they're shooting themselves in the forehead and all of us in the process because that's not how it's done. But these cool kids, once you tell them something that they don't understand, they huddle up and they run off. Now here's the other problem with the cool kids. These cool kids have an attitude of, if Bernie didn't say this, or if so-and-so didn't say it, if Jill Stein didn't say it, or if, uh, you know, whoever the soup du jour is, whoever the politician du jour is, if they didn't say it, if Robert Reich didn't say it, then that it can't be true. It's only true if they said it. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. It's just distracting you. Activists have to activate to make politicians do their bidding. This is just a fact. We all know this. You should know this by now. We all should know this inside and out. 
Unfortunately, candidates are trying to get elected by the slow kids, too. The kids that aren't interested in learning this stuff. And so they have to pander. So you know all this stuff, these people that are so woke, and they're belly aching at the quote-unquote establishment for telling lies, for not saying things, you know, that we want them to say? Well, the new crop of candidates won't say it either. And they're not establishment, are they? They're not establishment, are they? But they're cowards nonetheless. Why? Because that's the way the politics crumbles. That's how it goes. They are petrified to say truth because they will only say what regular people, the voters, can handle. And if the voters, if the voters don't understand how economics works, even your new crop of burners is going to burn us to a crisp. They're not even going to be able to do the right thing either. Because they're going to back themselves into a corner where they can't get out of it because they've gone and told the wrong story. They've backed the wrong myth. They've sat there and pushed the wrong story. And we all suffer. So I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> this has been the week from hell for me. And I want to put this in perspective for you to understand. I was working in my yard the other day, and I fell down. I'm a big man. I'm, a, I'm six foot plus, 200, and on the high end of 200, 270. And I fell. I twisted my knee and tore my meniscus, my men medial meniscus. And it hurts like a son of a bitch. And I'm probably going to need surgery. But just in the middle of that, my car breaks down. My, my transportation to and from my job breaks down. That car loses a turbo, probably loses an engine. And then on top of it, I get papers for an old error I made on my state tax returns. There's 1800 suddenly. And then I get a $500 bill immediately thereafter from my tax attorney who had done my taxes for me. And then, on top of that, <laughs> no joke, on top of that, I'm told that I owe, like, another 500 for this and that. And it was like, by the time it was all said and done, I just sat there numb. Completely and utterly numb. Until I woke up in the middle of the night with a toothache. And realized that my tooth had just cracked and broke in sleep. <laughs> so I've got this tooth. Half of it fell out in the middle of the night. And I feel the stinging pain of a cavity that I didn't know was there. And so cavity, torn meniscus, dead tr car, no means of getting to and from work. And then arrears on taxes, you name it, all at once. And then, as if that wasn't enough, Nelnet calls. Nelnet, the student loan company, calls and says, you're behind, you're behind on your student loans. Now, I'm telling you this for a reason. I have a good job. I have a very, very good job. It doesn't pay enough to cover all these things, but it's a very, very good job by all sense and standards. And I've got great bosses, and I like the people I work with. Can't complain at all. I am atypical. I am not the normal guy. Everybody doesn't have a good job. And I'm going to fall down majorly. This is going to really, really hurt. I'm not joking. This is going to hurt. But just like back in 2009, when I lost a 17-year career at Verizon and the world seemed like it was going to hell in a handbasket, because it was, I'm looking now and I'm saying to myself, my God, the people have been fooled to believe the economy is okay right now. The people have been fooled to believe that unemployment is way low. The people have been fooled to believe that we're okay. 
and that we can turn our gaze and focus on these immigrants and focus on all these other things. But again, I'm sitting there and this is all within three days. Everything that I just told you that hit me was all within three days. Three days. The only chance I've got to get out of this hole. Oh shit, I forgot to tell you also. My son, who's got autism, was accepted into a feeding clinic now. But it's a good 30 miles away to get there. So you start stacking the stuff up. And you say, how would a regular, not a, just average voter, an average citizen, how would somebody that doesn't have a good job or, or what, how would they survive this disaster that's hitting me? And I'm telling you right now, my friends, I, I, I'm struggling with sleep. No joke. It's hard, man. This is heavy shit. I'm smiling because I know that I'll find a way to pull through this. I don't know how, but I will. I know I will. I believe I will. I have family. I have friends. I have a good job. Something's going to happen. Something will happen. But most people do not have that set up. And that is the state of our nation. One three-day period of time can change your entire world. And none of it having anything to do with you. The turbo on my Subaru fried out, sent shrapnel, if you will, into my engine, destroyed the engine. Turbo just goes, man. There's no real maintenance to it. It just goes. So how does an average person overcome this? Well, the only way they overcome this is either to completely check out a society and go hide off in a tree somewhere. Or we the people rise up and demand that our government take care of us in a way that makes it so that we have room when bad times come. You can only take so many of these hits before your life savings dwindles to nothing. You can only take so many of these hits before you start going down the toilet yourself. I want to tell you, <clears throat> when I found out my car was going FUBAR, I was on the way to taking my son to a doctor's appointment. He had got sent home from daycare because he had hand, foot, and mouth. And so my son and I are sitting there at a gas station, broken down. There's no seats around there. I've got a torn meniscus. And I'm walking around, limping around, trying not to hurt myself as I keep my son who is two and a half years old and wants to run, keeping him calm. And because of where my mind is always at, all I kept thinking was, those sons of bitches, those son of a bitches, that called MMT a cult. Those sons of bitches. That's all I could think about. Because MMT, modern monetary theory, which is what I talk about frequently, shows us, point blank, that our nation can afford to take care of its people without reducing deficits, without worrying about the non-existent national debt. It can take care of the people. The surgery that's going to be coming up on my knee, and I'm most likely going to need surgery, is not going to be cheap even with my affordable care. It's not going to be cheap. Nor will a replacement car or getting my car fixed. Nor getting this broken tooth fixed. Nor all the other things I mentioned. We have put our own people in harm's way by ignoring economics because once you understand you can go out and activate on this knowledge you can activate on a pipeline god damn it you can activate on economic truth too you can activate on donald trump's fucking tax returns god damn it you can activate 
on a new deal. Stop letting these panty waist worthless politicians dictate how big a dream you can dream. Stop letting these worthless sons of bitches to deviate you from fighting for better for all of us. Stop letting the cool kids sway you by calling shit a cult because they're too fucking dumb. Dumb! Dumb! Dumb, dumb, dumb! To understand this stuff. And so they call it a cult. Do you understand this? How stupid you have to be to call economics a cult? You have to be the dumbest son of a bitch on the planet. I mean, I, I have more room in my heart for the d now dead Charles Krauthammer than I do these son of a bitches in the progressive movement that call MMT a cult. Give me a thousand crowd hammers compared to one of these sons of bitches that calls MMT a cult. I'm not joking. Not even joking at all. Hell, give me another Trump over one of these idiots that calls it a cult. That's how bad I think of them. That's how low life I think of them. That's how devoid of value I find them. You take away people's ability to survive because you don't understand something. And instead of humbling yourself, humbling yourself and saying, I, I want to know, I want to understand, but I just don't know about it. Can you please tell me? Can you give me some links? Can you answer these five questions, please? But no, they can't do that because they're too cool. They've got to take their selfies. They got to run around acting cool as the rule. They got to have their meet and greets in fancy posh places in New York City. They got to go all over the place doing stuff and they want to call it a cult because they don't want to admit that they don't know their ass from their elbow. So when you are sitting there and you break a tooth and you can't afford the dental treatment, you can thank one of these progressives that called MMT a cult. When your house gets a month or two behind and you can't find the extra money to pay your mortgage, you can thank these MMT's a cult people, the cool kids that don't know any better, too dumb to admit they don't know. You can blame them. I'd like to blame all these orthodox economists, these neoclassical sons of bitches, and they've got blood all over them. But I look at our own progressive community, because that's who I'm trying to fix. I'm not trying to fix the other guys. I'm trying to fix our own. Because we need our own to be smarter, ready to fight. And they're not. They just want to have a meet and greet. They just want to do selfies with their fist in the air. They want to make cute signs for a protest. They don't actually want to change anything. They love the idea of being in the front. They want to be at the front of the line. They want everybody to look up to them. They want everybody to say, oh, your makeup looks great today. But they don't actually want to learn how to afford a new deal. Not only to how to afford one, but think about this. Donald Trump's space cadet army or whatever the fuck he's putting forward now, where's all that money coming from? Where's the space capades coming from? Where's all the money going to be coming from? It ain't tax dollars. We know taxes don't pay for shit at the federal level. So where is it coming from? They're getting ready to try and cut Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, all to pay for tax cuts. Well, they don't need to pay for tax cuts. We need to spend to pay for tax cuts. You want to cut your taxes? Fine. Well, we're going to spend on the people. We're going to jack that sucker way up high. And we're going to give everybody health care. And we're going to give everyone student debt eradication and end the student loan usury immediately. Oh, and by the way, we're going to also invest heavily in green energy. And on top of it, we're going to make us have grade A infrastructure throughout the United States. 
That's what we're going to do to pay for your tax cuts. There's the trade-off. But instead, instead, these fist-in-the-air, selfie-taking, meet-and-greet fools are all about, well, we got to raise taxes to pay for stuff. MMT's a cult. But don't I look cute? Vote for summer. The suffering that we go through on a daily basis is of massively associated with our own ignorance and our own unwillingness to learn so that we can push for what we need. We choose to allow the cult of the cool kid. You know, I, I, it's like I want to be have my hoodie up and sit there on a skateboard and be Chino Moreno of Deftones going, push back the squares now that you need us, but you don't, so let it go. Because back in school, we are the leaders of it all. So stop that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's what I want to do so bad. I just want to drop that shit right on them so hard. Because these people literally are living a high school existence. The cool kid joiner club. And if you're not part of it, they excommunicate you. We can literally do everything we need. Do you understand the reason why we talk about taxes not funding spending is because we want conservatives who cannot stand social programs, who cannot stand government handouts, who cannot stand any kind of government anything. We want them to realize we're not going to take your hard-earned tax dollars and put them towards somebody you don't like's bad choices. Your taxes don't pay for their bad choices, so come join us so we all get taken care of. But now, now we can't do that. We got to have MMT's a cult. I'm telling you right now, these people that call it a cult, give me 20 Donald Trumps over one of them. Because that's how destructive the Cool Kids Club is that says this crap. And if you don't think that I'm willing, if you don't think that I'm willing to call out names at some point, if they keep the shit up, you got another thing coming because I'm serious as a heart attack. My child's well-being is in their hands as much as anything. You know, every time one of these shitbirds calls it a cult, what they've done is they've set back a new deal. They've set back a job guarantee. They've set back climate, climate, green energy type legislation. I have no illusion that these politicians are not bought and paid for. I have no illusion that they're not serving our needs. I have no illusion whatsoever that they will not do what we want them to do unless we force them to do it. I have no illusions. I have no illusions that we can't vote our way out of this either. But I do believe the people united cannot be defeated. And I do believe that if we each one teach one, that we can make this thing happen. Whether there's all Republicans, every one of them sons of bitches or Trumpers, I don't care. We can defeat them by prevailing upon them, by being in the majority and whipping ass. Taken to the streets, occupying town halls, occupying the local school board, occupying your local media station, occupying your city council, occupying everywhere you go. But you've got to trust that the fucking math works, that the economics is true. It's tried and true. It's been around forever. It's not a cult. It's freaking operational reality. The way our federal financing, and not just ours, but the way Australia's works and the way Japan's works, the way the UK works, Russia, China, I'm telling you, Canada. We must prevail or we all lose. Even the people I can't stand. Those people I wouldn't piss on their head to put out a fire. Those people. I want them to still have free health care. 
I want them to still have their student debt erased. I want them to still su survive and drink clean water. I want them to shut the hell up about this cult crap unless they know. If they can't enunciate and say what it's all about, if all they say is it's a cult, well, you got your answer. They're less than. They are less than. That is not a human response to call it a cult. It's disgusting. And it might just be killing somebody. Because the fact is, what when the spending decreases, the people up here, they don't feel it that much. The people down here, they start feeling it a little bit. The people down here, they start really, really clutching. And the people down here, they just die. That's what happens. When you fill the bathtub up with money and everybody's got themselves taken care of, everybody's taken care of. But when you sit there and you try to reduce spending, you literally kill these people at the bottom. That's why I call it murderer by proxy. Murderer by policy. This is as real as you can get. You cannot have all these spending programs reduced in the name of tax cuts. Neither one of them are dependent on the other. How do we get our movement to stop falling for the cute selfie takers that call MMT a cult? How do we get this movement to stop falling for the meet and greet crowd the selfie meet and greet crowd that calls it a cult. How do we get past that so that we can save our children's lives in spite of them? How do we get past? How do we get past? Trust, I know a guy died in real. Yeah. I, how do we get past the real cult, which is the cult of personality, the cult of the cute selfie taker? with the tiny fist in the air, calling economic truth the way we can do a New Deal today, a cult. You're following them right off a cliff. Every time you follow these kinds of people, you're following them right off a fucking cliff. And it might feel better on the way down because you're joined by a bunch of friends. But you're all hitting the rocks at the bottom dead. You're all hitting the bottom and you're all dead. I don't want to do that. I want to fight the herd and I want to go for truth. Because truth really, you know, they say the truth will set you free. I swear on my life this is the truth. The truth really will unite the people. When you understand that taxes don't fund spending... They literally don't pay for programs. Federal taxes literally do not pay for programs. Federal taxes are literally born into existence when they're spent by Congress, when they're written into law, and they are deleted when they're received as a tax. There is no printing more money. It's a circuit. It's always new money coming in, always old money going out, always. There is no, it, money doesn't just keep going like this. It's not how it works. It's very important that we understand this. So when they do say it's a cult, you can look at them and you can give them the stink eye go. I know all I need to know about you. I've just heard every little thing I need to know about you. Now, I don't give up on people easy. I really don't. I try and fight tooth and nail because it is that important that we do this. But I can tell you right now, if you just think in partisan terms, left, right, dem, whatever, and you think somehow or another because somebody supports Bernie, that that makes them instantly your ally, ask them if they think MMT is a cult, and if they do, you've got your answer. That's the truth. There's a cool kids club. If you're a part of it, you're probably not paying attention to the truth. I'm Steve Grumbine with Real Progressives, hoping you guys wake up 
and fight like sons of bitches. Fight, fight, damn it, for truth. Have a good night.